So big Uber and Lyft strike is happening today and uh, it was organized by Rideshare Drivers United here in Los Angeles and they were the ones who did the first big strike after Uber cut the per mile rate in Los Angeles by 25%. That was kind of the catalyst for the first strike a couple months ago and they planned this big one now for May 8th which is kind of the week leading up to Uber's IPO and uh, a bunch of other organizations around the country. I think there's eight or ten cities that are going on strike and actually cities all across the world. So I saw some initial footage from New York City, the strike that the IDG organized. It looks like there's a pretty good turnout, at least a couple hundred drivers out there kind of in support. So I'm going to head over to LAX right now. They've got a rally happening at noon. So I know some picketers are kind of in the terminals in the departure area, but I'm going to go head over to this noon rally and kind of see what it's like. So let's let's take a look. So I'm here at the protest. It looks like you can see it behind me. Probably about one to 200 drivers kind of coming in and out. There's a bunch of media, a bunch of press. Talked to a couple drivers here who went to the other event. It sounds like uh, there were more drivers at the first protest, but definitely a lot of uh, passionate speeches from drivers, from the organizers, and just uh, supporters in general. So as you can see behind me, should be a good view. Airplanes are kind of flying by, it's a little loud. They, uh, they've been shuttling uh, drivers in. I think they have a free parking lot. But to be honest, I just parked right here on the side of the street. There was plenty of parking. Automation should enhance the ability for workers to do their job, not replace them, not displace workers. I have the understanding that companies like Uber are investing in technologies to eliminate drivers. How are you operating at a loss when some of your drivers are making $3 and the riders are paying $41? You're not operating at a loss, you're operating out of greed. You're taking our hard-earned money to invest in a technology that will effectively replace approximately 3.6 million jobs worldwide. And when you think about the incentives, then what, they want you to drive what, how many rides for bonuses? 80 trips, 100 trips, 120 trips, you know what I mean? Who driving part-time can make those full-time driving uh, rides for a quote-unquote a part-time job? They know you can't make They know you can't do a full part-time job. They think it's a full-time job. What's going on there? Now, it's funny you talk about like the quests because a few years ago, there was like a quest. And if you did 200 rides, mm -hmm. you would get of you would get, you know, a bonus. Yeah. You wanna know how much that bonus was? How much? Two thousand dollars. God. Okay, back in the car. Uh the rally is kind of thinning out right now. Uh, this is a 24-hour protest here in Los Angeles. I know some other cities might have been a couple hours, uh, but they, here in Los Angeles, the Rideshare Drivers United, they asked drivers to turn the app off from midnight to midnight, so 24 hours, and they've actually been picketing all day uh, over in the departures terminal at LAX, so it sounds like there are about 100 drivers over there earlier uh, from one of the reports that I heard, and a lot of them kind of went after this rally was over, went to go do some more picketing. So. You you know, kind of my overall thoughts and impression. I talked to some drivers, a lot of drivers actually, uh, didn't talk to too many of the organizers since they kind of were busy, you know, talking to media, I guess real media, not me. Um, so I didn't want to bug them, but definitely, you know, the, the drivers that were there kind of in support, I think uh, some of them were kind of full-time, some of them were more in the part-time to full-time category, but definitely a lot of veterans and a lot of people who've been doing this for a while and sort of seen, you know, I'm talking about the strike supporters, a lot of the supporters, I think were people that have kind of over the years seen, you know, that Uber and Lyft have cut rates and, you know, maybe they've seen multiple cuts and the commissions have gone up and all that. So that was definitely one of the common themes. I mean, some of the, the two big things I think were the, uh, that a lot of drivers, I asked a lot of drivers what they thought they should be paid. And a lot of them pointed to uh, just raising the per mile rate, which, uh, you know, I think is one solution. And in New York City, for example, they obviously increased the minimum hourly wage, which I think is a better solution since it sort of forces Uber and Lyft not to oversaturate the market with tons of drivers. So uh, definitely some a good amount of press there covering the event and talking to drivers. It's going to make for some good sound bites for sure and definitely be beneficial to the cause that these drivers are striking for. And, you know, it, 
uh, for the most part, pretty well organized. Have to give kudos to the organizers, Rideshare Drivers United. They had uh, flyers and texts going out and uh, shuttles running. Uh, it, do, it does seem like some of the drivers, like I parked right here outside of the park. Some drivers, I guess, parked at the lot. And so some of them, they told me they were waiting for 15, 30 minutes, maybe 75 to 100 drivers uh, weren't actually there until the very end. Um, so, you know, like any big organizing thing there's a couple small challenges the planes were pretty loud at times but i think that they definitely got their message across and i was uh you know definitely impressed i guess you would say at how passionate a lot of the stories were and you know kind of the support that it wasn't just drivers there there were also some organizers from some other unions and labor groups and things like that so We'll definitely uh, keep an eye on how things go in other cities, and I'm curious to know uh, what you guys think of the strike and whether you think it was a success or not. Leave a comment down below. I know that's one criticism I've seen from other people is, you know, what's a one day or even a two hour strike going to do? And I don't think that's necessarily the goal of this strike. I don't think the goal of the strike, I mean, it, it would be nice if it happened, if, you know, Uber's not going to see these drivers strike and say, oh, we should go raise our per mile rate. Um, but I do think think that if uh, politicians and regulators start to look at this and say, hey, uh, what regulation is working? You know, in New York City, where they did the minimum hourly wage, you know, to me, that seems like, uh, you know, the more realistic goal of them forcing Uber and Lyft to raise rates. Because, you know, Uber and Lyft have had the opportunity to do this for five years, but they haven't. And, you know, I will say that some drivers did point out to me that in LA, Lyft actually has not cut rates, not yet at least, to match Uber. So Uber dropped the per mile and per minute, uh, or, you know, increase the per minute, but drop the per mile rate by 25%. But Lyft hasn't. So I talked to definitely several drivers who are driving for Lyft only right now or trying to reduce the hours that they do uh, on Uber. So it was interesting because this is technically, I guess, an Uber or Lyft strike, but some drivers that I was talking to seem like, hey, they're okay with uh, driving for Lyft, but just don't want to do Uber. And then the other big thing that I'll kind of end on is some drivers that I was talking to told me um, that they don't want to be employees. And so I think that's one thing that the organizers need to just sort of make super clear of the messaging, because I didn't see that in their messaging that they actually want uh, to become employees. It seemed like they were asking more for fair pay, higher per mile rate, lower commissions. I did see some stuff about benefits, but I didn't see anywhere that they were asking um, drivers to become employees or that's what they were fighting for. And I think that one of the best ways to get full-time drivers, part-time drivers is to fight for the stuff that we all care about. And that's going to be higher pay, whether it's per mile or a minimum hourly wage, lowering commission, um, you know, and sort of having a voice at the table, right? No one wants to be deactivated by Uber or Lyft and not have any any way to challenge it. So those are things that whether you're a full-time or a part-time driver, you can probably all agree on. So if you guys do have any questions, comments, or concerns, don't hesitate to leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer. All right, signing off. Take care.